Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us in Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and with me today on Likeable Science are Jolene Cogdell and Kaikalini McCarthy, both from Shamanad University, a biology faculty member and a student. And we're going to be talking about Shamanad and, and particularly how Shamanad really supports its students you know, through a very intrusive advising uh, experience. Sometimes it's referred to. But, uh, yes. But before we do that, I want, I want to sort of make a little metaphor here, as it were. Uh, something I ran into the other day that I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, these ants, a particular species of ants in Africa, uh, exhibit a deep sort of caring for one another that has not at all been seen before. These ants will raid termite mounds to, to get termite grubs and eggs to eat. And of course, the termites defend their mounds and, and bite at the ants, and in some cases, it injure them very badly. And injured ants will actually be picked up by their comrades, carried back to the nest, and cared for by other nurse ants, basically. These nurse ants actually lick their wounds, and this apparently is very helpful. These ants recover a good deal 80%, 90% of the time, whereas if they are too badly injured, they won't let themselves be carried back, and they end up dying. But it's very interesting uh, how sort of an intensive support system like that can actually be right. so helpful. And I, when I saw that and was thinking about this show, I was thinking, oh, there's a very cute little parallel there. Because Shaman, as I understand it, does a very intensive support for its students, right? Yes, absolutely. So, we, I mean, most larger universities, I mean, I recall I saw my advisor a few times. Yeah. I would go in during office hours Same for in, me. intermittently. Yeah, but I mean, I have almost no memory of the person, you know. But it sounds like something's very different at Chaminade, right? It's one of the benefits of being a small university, mm -hmm. I think. So, Kathleen, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you found Chaminade and, and what, what your experience were. were. Yes, yeah, so I went to high school at Sacred Hearts Academy right across the street, and so Shamana was always familiar to me, as well as the fact that both my brothers graduated from there and my mom obtained her master's from there. Um, and so that's why I decided to go to Shamana, but I had no idea what I wanted to major in, so I picked biology since that was my favorite class in high school. And freshman year, I was lucky enough to have Dr. Cogbo as my biology professor, and she took an interest in the freshman students and what we want to do with our careers, as well as what do we just like in general to help guide us to what we eventually want to do. And I told her that I was interested in science and the medical field, and she encouraged me to try a summer research program. And so I heeded her advice and tried out for a program, which I got into, nice. and then I went away to spend that summer, yeah. but unfortunately didn't finish that. Well, that, but you, you, you always learn something in these summer research experiences. I, I used to run uh, a research experience for undergraduate program at uh, University of Washington, had students coming in every summer, and yeah. They had different experiences. Some loved it and went on. Some thought it was just so-so and decided they were going to pursue other other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some students couldn't uh, hack the pressure of, right. of. I mean, one of the things that I think all of us at Shaman are very proud of, about Kai, Kai Kalini in particular is, although she was away, she did reach out to us before she made the decision to come home. It was the first time away, mm -hmm. and it was a little bit daunting, I think. Um, and she reached out both to me and her current uh, PI in the lab, which is Dr. Claire Wright, and it was about uh, well, maybe four or five days of discussion mm -hmm. back and mm -hmm. forth. Uh, we, we, of course, tried to convince her that she could do it, <laughs> um, but she decided to come home. Mm -hmm. What we're really proud of her about, and, and I think why she's where she's at today, is that she didn't let that experience stop her from trying again. Excellent. And Excellent. reaching out and, and pushing her comfort zone the following year, and, and it's been a great success for her. Yeah, wonderful. And, and so, so this first summer, you were you were at the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive Diseases, and Kidney Diseases, or something. Is that the acronym? Yes, I was at NIDDK for the summer, um, working in this woman's lab, who is actually a physicist, okay. and she got into biological research. Um, and so, I spent the summer living in D.C. and working there, and uh, I had a really amazing time and experience that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to get. Right, that's, I mean, that's the value of these kind of, uh, of research experiences, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, you can broaden your horizons, you can go off and work on problems mm -hmm. that you would otherwise never even know existed, right? And you really, I mean, first-hand experience in research is so valuable for students to get. I mean, there's, there's I a think it's so different from being, would you say, in the teaching lab? Mm -hmm. Like, how would you compare your teaching labs, which are all wonderful, but <laughs> how would you compare being in a teaching lab for your regular classes as opposed to the, the summer experiences you've had? 
I think in a teaching lab, there's kind of more structure to things versus in the research world, you see that nothing goes according to plan. A lot of experiments don't work. Right. You have to think and troubleshoot through things that other people have never done. And you do that very collaboratively with your PI and all those things, but it's so different because you really have to think and put in extra time and so much other work. Right, whereas in a, in a sort of standard organized laboratory experience, a lot of the bugs have been worked out, right? right. There mm -hmm. may be a few variables that are going right. to jitter around, but basically a whole lot of the sort of frou frou has been cut out. Yeah, and, and, absolutely. And, I mean, we yeah. do, especially at Chaminade in our upper division labs, and we can do this because we're small, we have come away a little bit from the more cookie cutter type of lab work mm -hmm. to try to give all of our students an experiential learning experience right. that our students who go away get. It's, but it's still not the same, right? right? It's, it's still a little bit more of a safe zone, and, and you don't have as much time. Uh, right. They have other classes that they're worried about. When they go away to these experiences, that's all they're doing. Right. Um, and, and it broadens their horizons and it lets them really see that what their professors are telling them in their classes have relevance in the real world. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that authentic research and right. actual research getting involved in that is, is, can be really life altering for some students. Mm -hmm. um, and it can, it can do so in a variety of ways. I mean, I've had students tell me after doing a summer REU experience, you know, no, I'm, I'm quitting science Absolutely. now. I'm, I'm going to go into law or whatever. And that's, that's fine. I mean, better they do it then than they wait two years into Absolutely. graduate school and decide that, no, this really isn't working out. And they've you know, spent a lot more time and energy for something that's not, not to their liking. So, yeah, uh, we've had quite a few students. A large portion of students come into biology, and, and they're going to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. You know, that's I, I was the same way as an undergraduate student. I'm going to medical school. I believe Kai Kalini, you were going to go to medical school, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a good portion of them that when they try research, it was not what they expe expected, mm -hmm. and they end up kind of changing their focus. Some they love it, but they say, okay, I actually never thought about doing research as a doctor. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do that, and they still want to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. Then we have our other students who who realize. You know what, I, I don't really have the mentality, I think, to be an MD, and, and I think I want to do graduate school instead. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our students who, uh, our, she's an alumni, Devin Rosterfer is her name. She's currently um, an, an environmental planner in Michigan. She got her master's over there. She was one of these students who was all over the place. She loved everything, mm -hmm. and she was part of our Hogan Entrepreneurs pro uh, Program, which is a certificate program that's an enrichment program for students who want to learn about business, and it puts them in touch with Hawaii business owners and, and lets them figure out how to start you know, asking the questions of how do I you know, pursue starting something up. She loved that. She goes, oh, I'll, I'll do my own business. She wanted to go to medical school. Um, she wanted to go into the Peace Corps. I mean, at some point in her four years with us, she was everywhere. And she did do research with Dr. Helen Turner, our dean. Okay. Uh, and she loved that. She goes, oh, I'm going to get a PhD. And it was her senior year, I believe. Uh, I took her with me to an undergraduate research conference. So uh, all of our students who do research, we encourage them to send an abstract. Right. Uh, in the fall, there are two conferences. Right. SACNIS, right. SACNIS and ABRCMS, okay. and we say pick one. And then we find funding for them to go so they don't have to pay for it out of their pocket. And I usually attend with them just to help navigate the whole process. And they present a poster. So they have a whole poster symposium. They have professionals come around and ask them questions about their research and ju judge them. Um, and so they get kind of that real world experience. And she went with, we said, we want you to go. She didn't have any research to present. But we do every once in a while with some of our students, we say, we think this will benefit you because there's hundreds of uh, federal government agencies there and graduate schools that are looking to recruit. And they go in the exhibitors hall and, and let's network. Let's look at you out there and mm -hmm. see all the opportunities. And I'll never forget her coming back from that. She, she found herself at that conference. Right. And she goes, I know what I want to do. And, and she had a love for the environment, but she loved science and she loved policy. And she goes, That's, I'm doing that. I, I met these PhDs in these fields, and this is what I'm going to go to graduate yeah. school for. And, and she's doing it, and she loves her job. But I remember that aha moment for her yeah. that as an instructor uh, and an advisor is really enriching for yeah. me. And again, this is, this is a, a nice example of, of how this rich. Uh, sort of student advising, intrusive advising almost, as it were, is, right. is a very powerful thing. And it really helps give students that engaging, those opportunities to engage and engage again and engage again. Right. And find, OK, here's my love of science here, my interest in policy and planning there, and suddenly finding, oh, there's, there's a fit here. There's you know? a fit, right. Yeah. And without, again, without getting away to a conference or another lab, 
you'd be very hard pressed to know that, right? To Especially even, being in Hawaii, you right. know, being in an island yeah. and we're a little bit isolated in ways and, and students don't realize that the science that we do here is just as good as the right. science, but they get to see that. They yeah. get to feel some pride in where they come from as well. Exactly, exactly. I think we have some photos of uh, some of the students, and, and we can just be bouncing these in and out as, as we continue our conversation here. But it's, it's a really, uh, you know, there's a, a, the, a poster session that you that's were talking about. Yeah. And that's, again, that's a, you've, you've done this, right? You've mm -hmm. presented it. So talk a little bit about that. That's, a, I mean, that's an interesting experience I always found as a student. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting to be able to go and show and talk about what you've spent your summer doing or the semester or anything like that. Um, and being able to be judged and so you can always do better and, and all those things and it's really a true test of things outside of lab. How well do you communicate science? How well do you know your project? And you can talk about it to people who maybe aren't as familiar or aren't scientists and so that's a really interesting thing um, and we always have professors who go with us and they really prepare us and make sure that we know what we're talking about and we can actively present our research to other people. It's a, it's a key aspect of science is the communication Absolutely. aspect. Yeah. And scientists, unfortunately, don't tend to get very much training in communication no, outside the narrow realm of writing scientific articles. Right. Uh, I used to work with the, the graduate students at the University of Washington Center for Nanotechnology and have them do five minute non-technical presentations, and many of them had never done this. Yeah. Never had the idea of, oh, I've got five minutes, I'm limited to three slides, I can't use any jargon. And I've got to somehow talk about my work and make it understandable and interesting. You know? and I think some of the excitement for the students, too, is it, uh, they're judged, right? Mm -hmm. right? But it's a very enriching and, and, and supportive environment. They don't feel criticism. it's constructive. Yeah. And so when they get feedback from PhDs from all over the United States mm -hmm. that is positive, they feel like this is real. It's not just Dr. Cogwell trying to make me feel good or Dr. Mm -hmm. Wright trying to make me feel good. Someone else who's never met me before said this to me. Right. Wow, I can do this. Right. right? And, and so it gives them a whole different level of confidence that we as their instructors are not able to give them. Sure. No, if somebody comes up to you at a poster session, starts asking probing questions, and you're able to address their questions and, and mm -hmm. sort of talk to them from what it is you found out that really can inform them, that, that's got to be, I mean, you know, yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. enriching, right? That's, that's empowering. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Kaikalina has enough experience now that she's going to her first professional conference in about 10 days. Oh, excellent. Now and she's going to be presenting it. And this is a conference that most, under, there will not be very many undergraduates there. Mm -hmm. But her research was accepted as an abstract, and she will be giving a post presentation there with postdocs and graduate students and other PhDs. So yes. we're very proud of her. Excellent, excellent. Where, where is this? This conference is international, so next year it's in Paris, but this year it's closer to home in San Diego. Oh, okay, okay. And for what organization? Um, this is the Society for Reproductive Investigation. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, might run into people who I actually knew. I worked for a while in a reproductive biology oh. lab, so uh, it's all kinds of interesting stuff yeah, that goes this on. This is their big, yeah. their big conference for right. the year, so. Excellent. So you, you also had a second um, uh, research experience, right? Mm -hmm. You went to Stanford for a summer. Yes, I was at Stanford, funded through Amgen. Um, so Amgen has scholars all over the US and in Japan that they fund every summer to do research, and you can get other funding opportunities through them throughout your career. But um, I was at Stanford working in the lab of um, the man who basically founded hematopoietic stem cells, and so he's the father of hematopoiesis, and that was a really interesting experience. Uh -huh, okay. And what, what sorts of things, I mean, what, what project did you do in that lab? Um, basically, what I was doing in that lab is working on this subpopulation of hematopoietic stem cells that they discovered and understanding where it goes in the bone marrow and what it differentiates into so that we can better figure out what kind of treatments to give people who have leukemia or have to face chemotherapy for some sort of um, bone marrow cancer. Excellent. Well, we're, we're going to dig more deeply into, into your experiences, Shamanad's program, when we come back. Uh, Kaikalini McCarthy and Jolene Cogbill are with me here from Shamanad University. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and we'll take a brief break and then be back in one minute. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha.
Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground, uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. And welcome back to the second half of our show here on Likeable Science. Uh, I'm Ethan Allen. With me today are Dr. Jillian Cogbill and Kaikalini McCarthy, both from Chaminade University, uh, biology faculty and a student. And we're talking about uh, Chaminade's programs and, and ways they support students in getting authentic research experience. And this is such, a, such an important thing. Students can easily, in some places, sort of drift through a, a, an undergraduate career without really doing anything of a really first hand in science. Right. And it's, it's great to see that Shaman really pushes, pulls, prods, supports <laughs> um, in, in uh, you know, getting out there and getting into a real authentic lab, doing actual first, first hand research. And it, it's got to be a good experience uh, on a lot, of, a lot of levels. I mean, you, you must have, from your, you had two different summer experiences. Uh, can you talk a little bit about sort of what science skills you learned? I think I learned a lot of science skills at those uh, institutions that otherwise in an instructional lab you don't necessarily get exposed to. Um, and I think also a really important thing that I gained from those experiences is working with animals, so working with model organisms instead of just cells. Although cells are exciting, most undergraduates don't get to work with animals. Um, and the kinds of research that you gain, the different skill set, is really interesting because otherwise you don't necessarily get exposed to that if you just go to class and go to your instructional lab. You know, and certainly uh, working with animals, if you're going to be a biologist, that's, that's something you should get familiar with. And it has a whole sort of set of things that come with that, right. caring for the animals, seeing the animals' well-being. The rules and regulations uh, are, are, all, are all critical. And presumably then at these conferences and presentations, you've been learning some science communication skills too, right? Yeah, you definitely learn how to effectively communicate your science, what you've done, and you also learn how to network with other people uh -huh. and talking about different things that you can do. I think another really great thing about these conferences is you can meet other people who you want to collaborate with, uh -huh. or you talk about how your project fits into theirs and vice versa, and so it's really interesting and um, you're able to collaborate and network in that sense as well. Yeah, and that, that happens actually, it's funny, we're doing a project at Prell out in the, mm -hmm. the Pacific Islands. Uh, the PI from the project was back at an NSF conference for others in the same program. She met somebody who's doing oddly parallel work in Maine. And now, oh, nice. now we're going to collaborate on, on a, another proposal together to take this to the next level. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's nice for the students because they see that there's all these people who are like me right. doing the same thing. And, and it's not just the networking. They get to make friends from other institutions that, that are their peers. And the opportunities that they get to see programs, because the colleges are there recruiting and for, for graduate programs and medical school programs. and programs that they never even heard of or thought of, and career choices that they never even heard of, that we, although we try, would not necessarily be able to bring to their attention, sure. right? So it's, it's so many different levels. They go to, uh, at the conferences, they have sessions for the students to learn how to better write personal statements, learn how to do a, a good interview, all, all the types of things they need to not just be good scientists, but just to be good in the career field right. and, and how to pursue whatever the next step is for them. Yes, and given, given how competitive science funding is, it's very important to learn Absolutely. those things. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, that really the enrichment though of talking to other students and hearing about their work and then having these sort of aha moments about, oh, I see, they're doing, they're asking this sort of question, I'm asking this sort of question, and maybe, maybe their perspective can inform my, my right. next set of questions that I'll do. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and then those sort of serendipitous finding somebody who's working on very similar stuff to you and maybe one step ahead somewhere or one step behind. And, yeah. Um, and I think a really interesting thing that comes out of these conferences is also you realize at the end it's about presenting your research, not just doing the research and you knowing what you're doing, but being able to share with others. And, and you really gain an appreciation for all the people who support you and get you there. So like our professors, we gain such an appreciation for them having the time to practice with us and for them pushing us to go away and spend our summer working instead of just at the beach and things like that. So you really gain this appreciation for people 
pushing you to do things that otherwise you may not be interested in. Because sometimes the application process is a little daunting, yeah. wouldn't you say? You know, and, and I think, I mean, as the student enrichment coordinator, one of my roles is to just help demystify that process. So they, they do all the work still. Sure. But sometimes, because all the information's out on the internet. I, it's not magic, anything that I do. It's just helping them not be scared to attempt it. No. Um, when they're writing their personal statements, you know, saying send it to me, and then we'll go over it over and over and over again until your personal statement is you know, beautiful. Otherwise, they just kind of send it, yeah. right? And, and uh, those personal statements are really important. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you, uh, sort of it, it, you could think of it in terms of this uh, popular term these days, the equity, right? right? That is, people start out at very different points. And Absolutely. it's not, not enough to give everyone a treatment, you know, because right. different people are still going to end up with very unequal things. But Absolutely. You know, people who need some, yeah, if there's people who have not, don't have a strong academic background, don't have a family history of mm -hmm. academics, to really help them Absolutely. and say, yeah, here, here are some we, of the steps you've got to We do. have students that, I mean, and Kai Kalini is one of them. I, I don't question that she's going to be successful and she's going to get into a graduate program mm -hmm. and she's going to do great things. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of our faculty do. And we have quite a few students. We're very fortunate, Shamanad, to have some excellent students. We have other students who are good, but they lack confidence in themselves and they have to work a little harder to get the grades than you know the, the smart kids, right? It's not that they're not smart, but they don't see themselves as smart. Um, and I think them having that little extra face-to-face -face time, the feeling like they can come to us. Uh, one of our alumni, Maya Corpuz, she just texted me three or four days ago to let me know where she's in her journey. That was her word. I wanted to just check in and let you know where I'm on my journey. And she just got accepted to a PhD program in pharmacy at USC. And she was one of those students who we knew she was smart. We knew she had it. And she didn't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. And we kept telling her, no, try this, try that. And she did it. And she's like, well, I, I kind of like it. I think I, go for it. And she kept going for it. And she graduated and was like, I don't know. I can't get into a program. But we just kept encouraging her. And then she was in a master's program at UH. And she would come back and be like, this is great. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. And she graduated last year, and she kept going. And, and I don't know. You know. I get emails from students, at least all of us, get one or two a year that say, I just wanted to check in. I'm at this program now, and I'm so thankful for being at Chaminade and for what you know you did for me, or what Dr. Wright did for me, or the time you took. I mean, I you know I only one or two a year that I get, but <laughs> they make my year. Sure, no, realizing you have that profound Absolutely. impact and really help somebody. It lets act. us know that what we think we're doing, we're doing. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're helping people really unlock their potential, right. basically, uh, that they might not have been able to do without uh, your assistance. So that, that's, that's truly, uh, that's good. It's got to be very gratifying. It is, it is. So, so where, where, after you presented this uh, conference, what's, what's your next step? Uh, well, this is my final summer before I graduate, and yeah. so I've decided to just stay here and finish up my project in the lab, okay. which we published, um, and then apply for programs and see what happens from there. Okay, excellent, excellent. And what what uh, have you you've hopefully by this time decided a little more what direction you want to go within the vast field of biology, right? Uh, yeah. So at this point, I want to do MD PhD or PhD. I'm still figuring that out okay. a bit, but that's pretty much where I want to go. Excellent, excellent. Oh, it's very exciting stuff in that in that sort of interface between medicine and research. Absolutely. Uh, chemical engineering. People go with that and tie that into clinical work. Bioengineering is just a hot field these days. Right. Um, yeah. There's all, all kinds of different different ways you can take that and you can, you can take a good life sciences background and move uh, forward. Yeah, yeah. Move move in any of a number of different directions. So that's very exciting. And it must be uh, interesting for Sean and I to, to track all their students. Oh, we, to, we definitely yeah. track. We, we've yeah. started a database in our department to try to keep track of where everybody goes and what they do. Yeah. Um, and we've been, I think, very successful, not just PhD in research. Mm -hmm. We've got plenty of students who are going on to medical school mm -hmm. uh, and, or professional jobs in industries that they want to be in. So we're, we're proud of what we're doing. And, and we're always trying to find ways to, to do it better. And try to reach as many students as we can because like I said there's always those students who are going to succeed no matter what right sure. so it's it's fighting it's for supporting them and helping those who don't have as much confidence uh, Kai Kalini is talking about she does her summer research but we have a certain amount of positions throughout the year of which she's been fortunate enough to be part of with Dr. Wright to do research at Chaminade mm -hmm. throughout the year so she's had the benefit of not only going away but oh. having year-long research experiences mm -hmm. which is why she's at a place now where she could potentially be an author on a paper Excellent. which is 
Yeah. Not often for an undergraduate right. to have that experience. Well, it's, it's, that's, that's super, and you should always seize those opportunities whenever you, whenever you have that chance. Uh, get your name into print, you know, does, does wonderful things. Absolutely. One, one of my fellow graduate students got a, a, sole, a sole authorship in, in science, in the journal nice. of science as, as a graduate student. Absolutely exciting. <laughs> she, she became the world's foremost expert on snail shells and, and how snail shells form and all. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that we're really getting excited about is uh, the SACNIS conference, yes. which is, I said, a national undergraduate mm -hmm. conference. Hawaii just won the bid to have it hosted here in, 19, in yes. 2019. Yeah. Dr. Heilani Chang over mm -hmm. at UH is on their board of directors, and she has been for years trying to get them to convince them that Hawaii is the place to have this conference. Right. And she brought together all the stakeholders. Yeah. Shamanad nice. was lucky enough to be at that table. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, Visitors Bureau was there. She right. got Kamehameha schools involved. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the UH system was at that table. Right. And uh, we, we made it happen. So yeah. we're very excited because now I can, in 2019, I'm not only going to have to take four or five students, because we pay everything. We pay mm -hmm. airfare. Now it's here at right. home, and, and I'll be able to take that money that usually has to be divided among maybe five, and not, we can maybe take 20 mm -hmm. or 30 students, and they're all going to get that experience yeah, okay. at home. Yeah, and plus, the students who've already been to that will, will know how to help out at Absolutely. the conference and, and help make a successful conference. All, all those conferences require a sort of huge amount it's a, of support. It's a big effort. I'm, I'm waiting for Heilani to, to call me and a couple of my colleagues here in the next year and, <laughs> and start asking for some help getting that oh, thing yeah. started. <laughs> You know how that one goes. Really. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. Well, I promised you I was going to do a, a quick off the wall thing here, right. and so the time the time has come now. So completely switching subjects. So both you in turn, you can think about it. If you could have the superpower of either being invisible or flying, which would you choose Ooh. and why? Invisible or flying? What do you think? I would choose flying because traffic is really bad. Here. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. I don't know. I'm a parent, so I might want to be invisible so that I could, you know, kind of sneak in there and see what's going on. And not just with my kids, with my students, too. That might be beneficial. <laughs> that could be helpful. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I learned a lot today, as I always thank do on the show. Thank you so much it's for having me. It's great to learn more about Shamanad's uh, programs. Wonderful to hear about your journey. I, I thank you very much. Kaikaluni McCarthy, Julian Cogbill uh, from Shamanad University. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and I hope you'll join us again next week on another episode of Likeable Science.